Hi, I'm Georgiana, and I'm back with a new episode. I'm here to help you speak English fluently. And what do you need to speak fluently? You need to listen, 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 and listen. If you want to help me, share the podcast with your friends and family. That would mean a lot. Thanks. On my website, you can get the five secrets to speak English and also my premium courses. Before we start, get the transcript at speakenglishpodcast.com slash podcast. It's completely free. Okay, let's start. In our previous episode, we talked about Diogenes Syndrome. It's when people collect too many things. Today, I will talk about practically the opposite, minimalism. A few years ago, this lifestyle became popular. The concept of minimalism is about removing unnecessary things and focusing on what's important. Seems logical, right? Well, sometimes, attempting to live a minimalist lifestyle can actually be more stressful than just accepting a little bit of clutter. Finally, it's about finding a balance that works for you. Here are some principles of minimalism. Simplicity. Enjoy the simple and the necessary. Utility. Have only things you use that are useful to you. Quality. Prefer fewer things, but of better quality. Consciousness. Think and choose what really matters. Order. A clean, organized space helps you think and live better. Peace. Seek tranquility in your environment. Autonomy. Live with the essentials and take care of your resources. And last but not least, experiences. You value moments and friendships more than material possessions. Mary Kondo is famous in the world of keeping things tidy. She's from Japan and has taught many of us to ask if our belongings makes us happy. And for some time, we all followed her advice on folding clothes neatly and getting rid of things we don't need. But now she mentioned that after having three kids, she can't be strict anymore. If Mary Kondo has found a balance, we don't have to be perfect either. A while ago, I was inspired by ideas of living simply, so I tried to make my life more minimalist. I planned it well in my mind, but it was hard to do. To be honest, it lasted only two weeks. Now I try to be sensible. I keep only what I need. And I don't worry if things are a bit messy. So I believe it's not about keeping your space perfectly clean and tidy all the time. It's more about creating a home where you feel cozy and calm. Sometimes things are a little messy like the shoes not being in the right place. But it's okay. I hope you found this episode interesting and that it helped you practice your English a bit too. What do you think about minimalism? Is it just a fad or does it have value? And now, let's continue with a mini-story. 
I will tell a story by asking simple questions. I use this technique a lot in my premium courses, as it is highly effective. First, I say a phrase with information. Then I ask questions. After each question, I pause. Now it's your turn to answer. And after each pause, I'll give you the correct answer. That's how I create our story. And if you want to improve your fluency much faster, check out my premium courses at speakenglishpodcast.com slash courses. There are several levels. Okay, let's start. Leo and Mary were a happy married couple, but had a problem. Were Leo and Mary just friends? No, they were not just friends. They were a happily married couple, but they had a problem. What did Leo and Mary have? A problem. Despite being a happy couple, they had a problem. Leo loved to accumulate all kinds of stuff in the house. Did Leo love to have an empty house? No, he loved to accumulate all kinds of things in the house. What did Leo love to do at home? Accumulate things. He loved accumulating all kinds of things in the house. Did Leo or Mary love that? Leo. He loved that, not Mary. Mary was a minimalist and liked the house without many objects. Was Mary a collector? No, Mary was not a collector. She was a minimalist and liked the house without many objects. Did Mary like the house empty or full? Empty. She liked it empty. She was a minimalist and liked it that way, without many objects. How did Mary like the house? She liked the house without many objects. Leo and Mary's house was divided into one part full of things and the other almost empty. How was Leo and Mary's house divided? It was divided in two. One part was full of stuff, and the other one was almost empty. Was one part of the house full of water? No, it wasn't full of water. One part was full of stuff, and the other one was almost empty. The swimming pool was full of water, but that's not important to the story. One day, Leo said, Maybe I could get rid of some objects. 
Did Leo say he could get rid of all his objects? No, he didn't say that. He said maybe he could get rid of some objects. Did Leo want to buy more items? No, he was considering getting rid of some objects. Mary replied, Maybe I could have some more objects. Did Mary want to get rid of more objects? No, Mary said. Maybe I could have some more objects. Was Mary happy to have the house almost empty? Yes, but she was considering being less strict. She was becoming more open to change. Between smiles, Leo and Mary agreed to compromise on their positions. Did Leo and Mary agree to fight about their differences? No, they did not agree to fight. They agreed to compromise on their positions between smiles. Did they agree to do that in tears? No, they didn't agree to do that in tears. They agreed between smiles. Were they peeling onions? And that's why they were laughing and crying at the same time? No, no. Between smiles, they agreed to give up their positions. No onions, no swimming pools. They now live in a house that is not empty, but not full of objects either. Do they now live in a house completely full of objects? No, they now live in a house that is not empty, but not full of objects either. How is their house now? It's a balanced house, neither empty nor full of objects. It is more practical. Well, we're finished with our short practice. Answering many simple questions can improve your speaking, just like talking in real life. Today you've tried a small part of the question and answer technique. Do you want to learn more? Get my premium courses. Visit speakenglishpodcast.com slash courses That's all for today. I will be back next week. Bye-bye.